let's start our discussion with a classical clinical case. Now, this is a 50-year-old male who came to us with pain in the abdomen. Now, I'll be showing you the cine clips of the CT image. But before that, there are three important things that you need to keep in mind before you look at those cine images. First of all, I want you to tell me what is the diagnosis. Obviously, it's a very difficult thing, but still, I want you to make a wild guess about it. How to report it? This is even more difficult. Once you know what the diagnosis is, many a times there are some spotter cases. Many a times you know that the diagnosis is clear cut in front of you, but you don't know how to report. So I want you to tell me how to report. What are the important parameters that you're going to keep in mind before you report a case of pancreatic adenocarcinoma? And finally, the most important thing is, likewise, I'm a surgeon and I'll be asking you, is this disease resectable or not? It has happened with me many a times that I had a word with surgeons. I thought it was resectable, but on table, the treatment was different. It was found surgically irresectable. So obviously, the only modality that we have right now is a CT scan for assessing the resectability status for pancreatic adenocarcinomas, but it does have a lot of shortcomings. What are the shortcomings? We'll be talking about later on. But before I go ahead, I just want you to have a look at this particular case. So since this is a case of suspected pancreatic disease and because we're talking about pancreatic adenocarcinoma, it has got to do something with pancreatic malignancy. So we're going to do a dual phase study. In this phase, I'm just showing you the arterial phase images and then we'll be talking about the venous phase. So let's start the cine clip. So we're going from top to bottom in this arterial phase. What do you see? I can definitely see that the main pancreatic duct is slightly prominent. It is not significantly dilated. The biliary reticles are okay. But when I'm going down in the region of the pancreatic head exactly here, I can not only see some stranding in the peripancreatic region, but I can also see some irregular, ill-defined, I should say, hypodensity within the pancreatic head region, which means this area of pancreatic head or the ancillary process is hypo-enhancing in comparison to rest of the pancreatic parenchyma, which is slightly enhancing more than that. Secondly, just have a look at the main pancreatic duct. It is dilated, 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 but here exactly where the lesion starts, this main pancreatic duct is not well seen. So whatever we are dealing with, it has got something to do with the pancreatic head and the insulinate process. It is enhancing less than rest of the pancreatic parenchyma. And secondly, it is in some way or the other related to main pancreatic duct in such a way that it is causing obstruction to the outflow of the pancreatic contents to the MPD. So this was about the arterial phase. Rest, I don't want you to have a look at anything else because everything else looks quite normal. Let's have a look at the Venous phase now. So what do we see in the venous phase when we just scroll in from top to bottom? Now we can see that the pancreas is enhancing quite well. The main pancreatic duct is dilated up to the region of that irregular hypo-enhancing lesion. Now I think by now one thing would be very clear that we're dealing with a case of some SOL, some mass lesion of the pancreatic head. Why? Why can't it be a pain pancreatitis? Many a times focal pancreatitis can also behave this way. But when we talked about pancreatitis, we talked about pancreatitis, past forming pancreatitis being different from pancreatic adenocarcinoma in major two aspects. First of all, pancreatic adenocarcinomas will be hypoenhancing like this. And secondly, look at the vascular encasement. Any, in any case, you won't have vascular invasion in a case of mass forming pancreatitis. Only masses, that is the typical pancreatic adenocarcinomas can cause compression, can cause encasement, can cause vascular narrowing as well as regularity of the vessel wall. So because we can see that the SMV has been shrunken or has been compressed by this lesion, so indirectly we're talking about a case of pancreatic malignancy. So I hope this is going to be the primer case. The primer facy diagnosis is quite clear. So we have probably answered the first part of the question. So let's get back to the question that was being asked to us. So the question that was being asked is, what is the diagnosis? For this, I just want you to have a look at the two static images. Now, I've chosen these two static images just in order to show you the morphology of the pathology. What is the morphology of the pathology? We can see that there is an ill-defined and irregular area of hypo-enhancement in the pancreatic and in the unsinate process. We can clearly see here. And why are we calling it a mass lesion? Because we can clearly see that the lumen of the SMB is significantly narrowed. It has been occluded. Normally, the SMV should look somewhat like this. That is, when you make a cut section of the SMV, it would be seen somewhere like a globular or round structure. Sometimes it can be flattened like this. But what we are looking here is, this particular lesion is actually encasing the SMV. Let me just clear it up for you. It's just encasing the SMV in such a way that the SMV is just reduced to a small slit-like appearance. So we do have a lesion which looks like a malignant lesion because of vascular invasion. Along with it, I hope that all of you would also be able to see some stranding in the mesentery. We're very sure we're dealing with a pancreatic adenocarcinoma. One of the important things that we should keep in mind, 
when we were dealing with the case of pancreatic malignancy or any other malignancy, as a matter of fact, these are the few important things that we should always look around. First important thing is location. Since we're talking about pancreatic adenocarcinomas, we have to identify whether the pathology is in the head, uncinate process, because D will be considered as one unit. Then, if it's not here, whether it's present in the neck, body or tail. So, to understand the location of this lesion and the surgical repercussions of the location that you're going to tell, we have to understand when you're going to call a lesion as a lesion arising from the pancreatic head, when we should call it from, as arising from the body and tail, and why is it important on the surgical point of view. So, this is one thing that we're going to learn thoroughly in this particular session. Second important thing, we have to measure the size of this lesion. Now, when you measure the size of this lesion in any orthogonal plane, we have to measure the maximum dimension. This is the most important thing. We have to measure the size of the lesion in such a way that we measure the maximum dimension. How do we do so? We'll be talking about that later on as well. Third, morphology. Now, this is specific for pancreatic malignancy and even more specific for pancreatic head tumors. Why? Because pancreatic head is one area which is closely related to the terminal main pancreatic duct as well as a CBD. So, majority of the cases which will involve pancreatic head or uncinate process would also eventually cause invasion of the main pancreatic duct and the terminal CBD resulting in obstructive biliopathy as well as dilatation of the MPD. In the previous case that we just saw, we had a dilated MPD, the biliary channels were somehow spared by the disease process. Then comes the difficult thing, that is vascular invasion and variant anatomy. Now, what are the vessels that we have to look for? What are the important arteries that we have to keep in mind? What are the important veins which we have to keep in mind while we're reporting? Because again, this is also going to make a lot of difference in the eventual outcome of the patient. If you overstage a case and you write that a particular vessel is involved to an extent which needs it unresectable, then you're actually denying life to the patient. Why? Because in CA pancreas, the treatment... In fact, I should say the curative treatment is only surgery. This makes the role of radiologist paramount because once you say that this disease is unresectable, surgeon is not going to open it and this is like a death sentence for the patient. So this is very important that you should be completely sure about deciding the arterial and the venous invasion and be looking at a number of cases in this session in order to identify when to call it arterially invaded or to call it venous invasion. Then variant anatomy is the part of the arterial invasion. We'll also be talking about it in detail. Then this is something new, perineural spread that we haven't studied a lot. So perineural invasion is also a classical hallmark of pancreatic head malignancies. You might have heard the name perineural invasion typically in head and neck carcinomas, but in pancreatic head regions, this is something which is recently been studied and discovered. So, you have to understand, you have to identify perineutal invasion as well. How do we do so? We'll be talking about that in detail as well. Finally, these are three things which are actually making the work of radiologist easy and making the life of the patient miserable. If you have mesentric or mesocolonic invasion, if you have nodal disease or you have metastatic disease, then these patients, majority of these patients will turn out to have an irresectable disease. Metastatic disease, clearly irresectable. You can't resect it. Even if there is a single metastasis in liver, lung, or anywhere else, it is unresectable. If you have peritoneal metastasis, it is unresectable. Nodal disease, if you have some distant lymph nodes, that is extra-regional lymph nodes. What are these lymph nodes? We want to talk about that also. So if you have extra-regional lymph node involvement, again, you, you're dealing with an unresectable disease or irresectable disease. Finally, mesentric and mesocolonic invasion is not a clear-cut contraindication to surgery. But if you have mesocolonic involvement also, then you will have to have a more extensive surgery like hemicolectomy to be done. So this is something which we also need to report. How do we report these? How do we identify these? This is all what you can discuss in detail in this particular session.